If I say the words, come follow me, who do you think of? If I say the words, come follow me, who do you think of? Jesus. Jesus. It's not difficult, right? We think of Jesus. I think the words, come follow me, or the phrase, come follow me, is one of the most famous verses, or famous phrases, that we can think of when we talk about Jesus, right? Jesus' way on earth, how he lived, what he did, come follow me. But what does that mean? What does that truly mean for you and I? And in a few minutes, I'm going to try and explain to you and see that, that you get what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm saying. Now, the first thing that you might think of is this. Jean, you are preaching to the church. What do you mean you want to tell us and what it means to follow Jesus? We know what it means to follow Jesus. And I'm sure you do. For those of you who do, let's just confirm that. For those of you who are not sure, let's make sure that you do know what it means to follow Him. Does that make sense? At the beginning of, of uh, January, at, actually the end of, of December, beginning of January, I started, I, I just had this urge. I had this urge. I wanted to learn how to play the ukulele. <laughs> Now I can see in your eyes, you're looking at me and said, that didn't work, did it? <laughs> now honestly, honestly, I, I, I set myself out and I said, I'm going to learn how to play the ukulele. So what's the first thing I did? I took the ukulele and I just fired away and I played every note and I could play the thing, you know, and I wish. No, that didn't work like that. So what I did was, I went onto the internet and I looked up how to play the ukulele. And I found this amazing guy that teaches you how to play the ukulele from scratch, right? He taught me how to play the ukulele in 15 minutes. Peter looked at me and said, yeah, right. He's absolutely right, no, I didn't learn how to play the ukulele in 15 minutes. <laughs> But I must be honest with you, practicing and practicing and practicing and practicing and practicing and practicing. On my birthday, on the 9th of January, I had my whole family on my bed. Joshua and Michaela slept over the night and they were there and Vika was there and JC was there. My wife was there. Everybody was there. And I had my ukulele. <laughs> and I've learned how to play happy birthday. <laughs> so here I am, following this guy on YouTube singing happy birthday to me happy birth and i serenaded my family right oh they enjoyed it they thought that was brilliant they thought i was the best you know? <laughs> but since then since then i i started to play uh, uh, lean on me when you're not strong how cool is that i've learned to play you are my sunshine my the best thing ever hey, that I've learned was to play Amazing Grace. How <laughs> It was amazing. Really amazing grace. I needed that. But what I want to say to you is this. I didn't just go ahead and drug and took it and played it. You know, it took me some time to look at a guy and how do you, how do, you do that, right? And on this small little ukulele thing, right? How do you do? And I watched and I played and I watched and I played and I watched and I played. And I, I became an apprentice of somebody that I don't know on the YouTube teaching me how to play the ukulele. I became a disciple of someone teaching me how to play the ukulele. Because that is what I wanted to do. How many of you know it's really important that you know who you are a disciple of? And who you are, in our modern day language, who you are an apprentice of? So the question that I would like to roll out to you this morning is this. Jesus says, come follow me. My question to you this morning is this. Who are you following? Who are you following? And like I said, we can say now to ourselves, John, you're speaking to the church. What do you mean? And I'm going to un unpack it a bit and let's see what that truly means. Everybody is following somebody. Let that just sink in for a moment. Or at least something. 
Put in another way, we are all disciples. The question is not, am I a disciple, but rather who or what am I a disciple of? Did that sink in a bit? We are all disciples of something and somewhat. The question is, of who or of what? Teach Harrison Warren said these words. He said, none of us come to what we believe by ourselves. The world has no free thinkers. None of us comes to what we believe by ourselves. The world has no free thinkers. You know what's marketing's biggest thing, biggest success? If they can market something so well that when you look at it, you think that you've made the decision to buy that thing. That, that's their ploy. If they market something so well that when you look at it, you say, no, 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 I, I make a decision, I need that. You become an apprentice, you become a disciple of something, of somewhat, you start to believe in something of what is presented to you. It's only human to be drawn to someone, a celebrity, a guru, or a historical figure, and to desire to become like them. This, part is, this is part of how God has wired us. Now, for those of us who desire to follow Jesus, here is the reality we, turn, we must turn and face. If you desire to follow Jesus, this is the reality. If we aren't intentionally formed by Jesus himself, then it's highly likely we are being unintentionally formed by something or someone else. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? You get that? For those of us who follow, want to follow Jesus, if we're not intentionally being formed by Jesus, then it is highly likely we are being unintentionally formed by someone or something else. And that is a scary thought. So what is forming your thought, thought process? What is forming your life? After who are you fashioning your life? I'm saying this, I'm saying that we, as a church, we are, we are desire, we desire to follow Jesus. If you ask this question, who is Jesus? Time magazine said Jesus is this, the most persistent symbol of purity, selflessness, and love in the history of humanity. That's a pretty good expression, right? That's a pretty good description. But I love C.S. Lewis's description of Jesus. Listen to this. He says this, a man who was merely a man and said the things of Jesus uh, the things uh, Jesus said would not be a great moral leader. He'd either be insane or else he'd be the devil of, of hell. Listen, are you with me? You must make your choice. Either this man was and is the son of God or else insane or something worse. But let's not come up with any patronizing nonsense about him being a great human teacher. He has not left that open to us. He did not intend to. I love how C.S. Lewis describes it. He says, if any man, mere man, said what Jesus said, we would think he's insane. So either he was the son of God or something else and if we say that we follow Jesus if we say that this is example we, we, we have come to follow him what is it that we are saying and who is it that we are following who is it that we are truly following it's an age old question it's a question that Jesus and his disciples grappled with. And I want to just take you through this story, this journey for the next 10 minutes. And I'm sure that it will bless you as much as it blessed me. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 to 28. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 to 28. You can read it behind me or you can read it in your own Bible. 
Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 to 28. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do the people say the Son of Man is? Here's the question Who do you follow? Well, I follow Jesus. Well, who is Jesus? And he asked them, remember, they've been following him. By this time, his disciples have been following him for a while. They've been walking after him. They've been seeing what he does. They, 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 they follow after him. And he asked this question, he says, who do the people say that the Son of Man is? And they replied, some say you are John the Baptist. And others say you're Elijah. And still others, Jeremiah and one of the prophets. Why would you link Jesus with one of those guys? I mean, the prophet Jeremiah almost lived 600, 700 years before Jesus lived. I mean, if, if, if Peter would come to me and say, who do the people say I am? I'm not going to look at him and say, ah, oh, Julius Caesar. <laughs> Napoleon, short. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Don't be mad, don't be mad. I still love you, I love you. You get what I'm saying? I mean, why would, why would somebody link someone with somebody that lived so many years ago? Because he had the character traits, he had the attributes, he, he, he talked like someone who was different. Right? He, he talked like someone that was different. And that is why some of the people said, this is who you are. If they would ask you, who do you follow? And you would say... Jesus, what are you saying? What are you truly saying? Are we talking about a mystical power presence? Something, someone that we think, you know, was a good guy? Well, C.S. Lewis made it very clear that you can't just say he was a good person. And then Jesus turns to focus, and this is what I love, and this is what, what comes to us this morning, is this, but you, he asked, who do you say I am? Now we all know the story of you grew up in church, you know exactly what's coming, you know exactly what the answer was, you know exactly what it is. But when I read that this morning, when Jesus said, come follow me, there was something different in all of this. There was something different in being a disciple, an apprentice of Jesus. Because he says, he says, what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? And Peter can't keep his mouth for one second, blurts this out. And can I be honest with you, when I read it again this week, I jumped up from my chair because I just couldn't sit down. He said this, he said, you are the Messiah. You are the son of the living God. Church, that just, that just did something within me. I, I can't explain it. I've read this time. I've preached about this message so many times. But when I read this this week, it's as if something came alive. It's as if Peter, he said, who are you following? Who are you fashioning your life after? After who are you, who are you following that you make your decisions, Peter? Who, who's fashioning your life? The Messiah, the Son of the living God. I'm fashioning my life after the one who is worthy of all praise, of all glory, of all power. I'm fashioning my life after Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. That church, and that's, and it's Him that you are following. The Son of the living God. The main example of what life is is about and then Jesus comes in verse 17 and he answers him he says blessed are you Simon son of Jonah for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood church I think some of us have sometimes got a head knowledge of this one that I serve 
And that's why sometimes we think he knows what he's talking about and sometimes he doesn't know what he's talking about. And then sometimes we think we follow him because it's good and sometimes we make our own decisions we don't follow him because he doesn't know exactly what I'm going through. Being an apprentice of Jesus, let me say this to you, you need a revelation of who is the Son of God, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. You need to know it in your spirit. You need to have a revelation of who this Jesus is. Otherwise, it will always be just head knowledge. Flesh and blood will try and reveal it to you. Jesus comes in and says, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven. Peter, you've got a revelation of who I am. Who do the people say I am? John, Jeremiah, this, that. How did they look at Jesus? They looked at Jesus through flesh and blood. They tried to look at him and try to understand what he is and what who he is through their understanding, through their knowledge, through through to how they can explain him and, and what the Bible. But it takes a revelation from the Father to know who you are truly following. And then Jesus says, and I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. You know what, this morning I just want to shout it out over you. You are the church of the living God, and Hades will not overpower you. Hell will not overpower you. It's not my words, it's Jesus' words. You are part of the church. Do you have difficulties? Yes. Do you have difficult times? Yes. But you will not be overpowered by Hades. It's God's word. He says that I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Something amazing happens in this moment. Where the disciples get a revelation of who they are following. In Mark chapter 1, Jesus says, come follow me to Peter. And he leaves everything and he follows after Jesus. And in Matthew chapter 16, he's getting a revelation of this person, of this man who he's truly following. He, he gets this revelation and says, this is the Son of God. When Jesus says, come follow me, you first need to have a revelation of who you are following. Otherwise, you will follow half-heartedly. Otherwise, you will follow half-heartedly. Because when the Messiah, the Son of the living God, says to you, stop doing this. There's no communication or conversation. There's no, um, yeah, but let me just explain to you why I'm doing this. Maybe you will understand why I am keep on doing this. There's, does it make sense? If I follow him, I live like he says. And his word tells me how to live. His word speaks to me how to live, the one that I follow. This is not where the story ends. I'm just going to continue reading. It says, because from that time on, Jesus began to explain, verse 21, to disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and in the third, and on the third day be raised to life. Who do you say I am? You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And I will fashion my life after you. You are my prime example. You are everything to me. And as he walked off the line, so Jesus, Jesus began to explain to him, say, look, I'm going to be killed. I'm going to suffer a lot. And this is what I'm going to go through. This is what's going to happen to me. And uh, it's going to be tough. No, no, no. You are the Messiah. The Son of the living God. 
No, but what I'm just saying to you is, is that this is going to be weird, right? This is going to be hard. It's going to be difficult, and this is what's going to happen. And um, yeah, I, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to be killed. Now, Peter again. And you know the story. Peter again took him aside, and he began to rebuke him. And he took him aside and he said, Messiah! Son of the living God! I mean, just those words. If you just, if you just think about it. <laughs> the Bible says, he says, Never, Lord! A few verses before, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. You know what? When I read that, it sounds like you and me. It sounds like when Jesus is speaking about us and speaking about our lives and speaking about what we are, we are blessed with. And it's as if there's always this, I, I want to I I have this, this argument. We, we can't just accept stuff. We always have to argue about stuff. Ah, love your husband. Oh, but God, no, you don't understand. Love your wife. No, no, no. Jesus, son of the living God. Let me explain to you who she is. Love your children. God, you have not raised my children. <laughs> that work colleague, that person that you stays next to, your neighbor. Jesus, you do not understand. Never, Lord. Let me explain to you how this works. Let me explain to you how my marriage works. Let me explain to you what it looks like to, have to, 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 be, to be in my home with my kids. Let me explain to you what it looks like to have this sickness that I have. Let me explain to you what it feels like to go through the challenges that I'm going through. Let me explain to you what it is, Lord, because you don't understand. Son of the living God. <laughs> Just think about it. That's our lives. Who do you follow? I follow Jesus. What do you mean? I follow the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Do you do what you want to do? Yes, I do what I want to do. <laughs> you know what would have happened if I looked at that YouTube video and I looked at this guy and he says, this is what a sea looks like. I said, no, that's not what a sea looks like. This is what a sea looks like. <laughs> and I made up my own sea. And he says, no, this is what a D looks like. I said, no, 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 you're wrong. This is what a D looks like. And what if I would have tried to play... <laughs> happy birthday it would have come out really bad now they think it still came out really bad but at least I had the right chords <laughs> no if I'm following someone and he says to me this is how it works then this is how it works if he tells me that this is what you do then this is what I do why do we say we follow Jesus if we do what we want why do we say we follow Jesus? Because here comes Peter and he says, Never, Lord. Never. This will not happen to you. This shall not happen to you. Jesus, Son of the living God, let me explain to you what will happen. This will never happen to you. And Jesus turned and said to Peter, and this is what I want you to get very quickly. And Jesus turned around and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You're a stumbling block to me. Why? Why is he a stumbling block? Why is he a stumbling block? Listen, listen to this. Listen to this. You do not have the mind. You do not have in mind. You do not have in mind the concerns of God but merely human concerns. He says, Peter, you follow me, you walk off to me, you announce and say that I am Messiah, the Son of the living God. You have allowed, now the Greek word there, for, for you have in mind, is actually your thoughts has been influenced. You are thinking 
wrong. You are thinking on a human level. You are not thinking how God wants you to think. You are thinking how human flesh is thinking. You are concerned about merely human stuff. Yeah. Come on, let's be honest. Why, get we, why do we get in an argument with Jesus? Why do we get in an argument with Jesus? Because it doesn't suit our lives. And we think we know better about our lives than what He does. I mean, I, I just use the example. How to be a husband to your wife. How to be a wife to your husband. How to raise your kids. How to, that's, that's just plain examples. But even in that, we want to argue with Him because our minds are concerned with human stuff. Our minds... Let's be honest, are concerned with us, not with what God says. <laughs> Love that appeared last week, just highlighted this and said, the Son of Man didn't come to serve, or come to be served, but He came to serve. If you are a disciple of Jesus, you don't argue with that. If you are a disciple of Jesus, you say, Yes, Lord, where do I serve? He says, okay, start with your wife. Anywhere else but there. <laughs> start with your husband. I'm sure, God, you've got another plan. Come on, let's just be open and honest. I'm not even talking about bringing people to Jesus. I'm not even talking about being an example outside to see people's lives being changed. I'm not even talking about your work college, the people around you that you can be this witness to because that they will look at you, they would say, who are you following? I'm following the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And my thoughts are not being influenced by merely human desires. My thoughts are being influenced by what He does. Peter was there in body, he was there in spirit, but he allowed his thoughts to go haywire when he looked at what Jesus was saying. Church, Jesus says this. Then Jesus said to his disciples, and this is what I want to leave with you. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves Take up the cross and follow me. You know what I read there? I read an open invitation. This is not just for someone. Whosoever, whoever, are you part of the whoever's? Whoever wants to be my what? Whoever wants to be the person that walks after me, that fashions his life after me, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. To deny oneself means to set aside one's own interests in exchange for God's interests. Denying oneself is putting to death one's own ambitions and desires. Can I say putting to death one's ambitions and desires as Luke says it daily. Daily. These ambitions and desires must constantly be set aside if we are to be like Jesus. The invitation is open. Come follow me. Here's the requirement. Deny yourself. Take up your cross. And follow Him. When Jesus used these examples of taking up your cross and follow me, for the Greeks and the Romans and the Jews even of that time, 
hearing him say that, it made a lot of sense. Because they regularly saw crucifixions. They've, what they heard was shame. What they heard was humiliation. What they heard was, this is going to be tough. What they, this is what they've heard. The, the, the pictures of the crucifixion were so vivid in their minds that when Jesus said, if you want to follow me, deny yourself. Be willing to die to self. That's what they heard. And I was so excited this morning when we sang this song, how God loves us. How God loves you and me. The choice that you and I have to make as followers and as disciples of Jesus is I am I dying to myself daily. Come, follow me. Whoever wants to follow me. Whoever wants to follow, not just a Jesus. Whoever wants to follow the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Whoever wants to fashion his life after him, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow him. Can I pray for us? I've had the amazing privilege of this week meeting a new friend came to see me in my office and he said this, he said, I want to meet this Jesus who's able to change lives can't tell you the excitement acknowledging son of the living God I want to ask you this morning while your eyes are closed I want to ask you, who are you following? Are you following sometimes when it's convenient? Who are you following? Firstly, ask yourself this question. If I say I'm following Jesus, who do you say He is? Do you say that He is? the Son, the Messiah, the Son of the living God? Or is that still something that you are contemplating? Because if we say that He is the Son of the living God, then we say, my total surrender is to Him, everything I have. I'm not going to ask you to stand, I'm not going to ask you to put up your hand, all I'm going to ask you, right there where you are this morning, make this out for yourself. Who are you truly following who are you truly following heavenly father firstly I want to say thank you for Jesus I want to say thank you for Jesus that came and showed us how to live this life. How to live this life in joy and in freedom. How to live this life and truly live. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for loving us so much that you sent your son to come and show us what it means like what it looks like to live like God on this earth Jesus this morning we acknowledge you as the Messiah the son of the living God not because we've heard it not because we've seen it with flesh and blood, but because we know it, it's been revealed. 
And I pray for each and every one in this building this morning, Lord, saying, Jesus, I want to follow you. I believe you know the best for my life because you are God. I want to follow you. I pray, Lord, that we will not be concerned in our thoughts with human concerns, but that we will allow God even to fashion our minds and fashion our thoughts and put into perspective, Lord, to the place where we come and say, Lord, it, even if it doesn't make sense to us, we will follow you. Even if I don't understand, even if I get humiliated, even if it feels like, Lord, I'm denying myself, even if it feels like, Lord, I'm, I, I'm crucifying this flesh, Lord, even, even that, Lord, I want to come and say, yes, Lord, I want to surrender. I want to follow you. Pray this morning, Lord, that that will be our heart's desire. Following the Messiah, the Son of the living God. In Jesus' name. Amen.